Hello everybody, welcome to the video on situational interview questions and answers for financial analysts from careerright.com. Now see, for these type of questions, the interviewers are not interested in just your subject knowledge. They are also interested in your problem solving ability and your analytical ability, which tells them about your overall approach, which is very, very important for such type of roles. So in today's video, let us see some real world scenarios and how to find thoughtful solutions to them. Ready? Fantastic. Let's start. Okay, so our first question is, if you have the option to receive $15,000 today or $20,000 after four years, which one would you choose? Now see, pretty interesting question because as all of us know, it is a human being's instinct to receive that money immediately. But this particular question is based on the concept of time value of money, right? What is going to happen to this particular amount four years down the time, five years down the time, 10 years down the time. And based on those calculations, you decide whether you want the money today or after some years. Okay. So if the present value of these $20,000 is more than is more than $15,000, which means if you are going to receive more money after four years, it makes more sense to receive this money four years down the time, right? But if the present value of these $20,000 is less than $15,000, which means you are going to receive the value of money will be less. In that case, it makes more sense to receive the money today itself. Now, how do we find that? To find that, we have this formula, finding the present value of money. Okay, so PV, that is present value of money is equal to future value of money, FV, divided by 1 plus I to the power N. What is I here? I here is the rate of interest. I here is the rate of interest. And N is what? N is the number of years. Okay, so uh, based on uh, present situation, I have taken the rate of interest. Look at this right top corner. I have assumed the rate of interest to be 6%. And when I place these values in this formula, what do I get? The future value of money I have to find out, uh, the present value. So, and the future value is 20,000, right? So, 20,000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.06 to the power 4 because 4 is the number of years here, okay? And now I'm trying to find out the present value of this money. Okay. And when I did my calculations, I found this value to be $15,842, which is greater than $15,000. Right. So now look here. So until you plan to use your $15,000 in such a way that you'll be able to generate an income of more than $15,842 in four years, it is better to take the money four years later and receive $20,000. If you cannot make uh, increase your money yourself, it is always better to take that money later on. Okay, with these calculations. So the choice depends on the potential for investment where you are going to invest it. Look at this box. Very, very important. So this choice depends upon the potential for investment. Where are you going to invest your money? How much are the going, returns going to be? Okay. What are your personal financial circumstances? You might be in a uh, position, uh, situation where you require the money immediately. Right. So in that case, you might decide to take the money immediately and the rate of interest also. So taking all these things into consideration, you decide whether you want to take the money today or down the time. Right. But the present value of money is very, very important. And this is how you are expected to answer this particular question. Okay. Maybe if required, you can replay this much part of the video and try to take a closer look at everything that I have explained here. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. Okay. And our question number two is a technology startup invested heavily in R&D and got a breakthrough product in the market. It reported a very strong performance in EBITDA. But the net income it posted is negative. What could be the reason? Another very interesting question. Asked many a times in the interviews, 
how would you investigate it as a financial analyst just try to think it is this concept of ebitda that is very important here so as we know ebitda means earnings before interest taxes depreciation and amortization now since this is a startup and it has invested heavily in r&d there is a possibility that it has got high depreciation and amortization expenses which will impact the net income while they will not impact the ebitda but they will heavily impact the net income so this can be the first possibility the second possibility could be that the company the startup has uh, funded its r&d with the help of some debt and in that case it would have some interest payments to be made that would also impact the net income although it will not impact ebitda so this could be the second reason the third reason could be these startups when they start they invest a lot in their growth while they are not worried about their short term profitability so in that case if you look at it from the another perspective it is a positive thing because that is preparing the company for a very high future growth and that is what the company's aim is and in that case it would be high operating cost that the company would face which will impact its net income so this could be the third reason so you see basically the difference if you look at this box the difference is between the operational performance and financial reporting which is causing this so as i said don't get disappointed if you see a negative net income of a startup because you have to find out the reasons behind it which a non financial person will never be able to understand so as a financial analyst it is your job to make the stakeholders understand the reasons behind what is actually happening okay let's move on to question number 3 now okay and our question number 3 is imagine you are given the file of a retail business that has a high current ratio of 3.5 what does this suggest to you as a financial analyst another very interesting question another very important question because these are the type of things that you face in the real world when you do the real job when you do the real work these are the type of things that you have to face and that is why the interviewers are very interested in these type of questions okay now all of us know that current ratio is a liquidity ratio it tells us about the ability of a company to meet its short term obligations with the help of its short term assets now a liquidity ratio of 3.5 does tell us that the company has a lot of liquidity it has a lot of money with it right now in the form of cash okay and uh, it can easily meet its short term obligations very easily but such a high current ratio if you try to investigate it more can tell you a altogether different story okay that is why it is very very important to delve deeper into the things okay and the possible reasons for such a high current ratio could be that the company is probably taking a very conservative approach when it comes to investments and expansion okay it may have its own reasons for uh, that to do it may have some other plans because of which it is keeping that money uh, uh, with it but it definitely suggests that at the moment the company is very conservative about investment and expansion okay the second reason could be that it has a lot of inventory management may be problem this is a suggestion this is what the ratio suggests because there is a possibility that a lot of high value assets are stuck in the inventory so this is something that you have to check this is the direction in which you should investigate if you look at the quick ratio it will easily tell you about the position of inventory because the current ratio includes inventory but the quick ratio doesn't so take a look at the quick ratio the third thing to look at is the uh, cash flow statement because it tells that a lot of underutilized cash is lying with the company now as i said the reasons for this to happen can be many maybe the company is planning for some investment big investment in coming future maybe it is planning to acquire maybe another company right so all of these can be the reasons but it definitely suggests that 
these are the type of things that are happening so if you look at the cash flow statement it will tell you about the inflow and the outflow of cash which will give you quite a good picture about what is happening there but as i have been saying throughout don't jump at the conclusions don't jump at the conclusions because finding the reasons making comparisons with the industry benchmark and then deciding what is actually happening is very important the people from non financial background may not understand this but as a financial analyst it is your duty to find out the things in all these directions to look at the to uh, dig the things deeper and to investigate the things in all these directions and then suggest your stakeholders what is actually happening they are looking actually out for your expertise and that is your job to provide them this expertise and that is why as i said the interviewers are interested in these type of questions the real world situations okay now on this screen i've got two practice questions also for you if you know how to approach these questions try to answer them in the comments box below it will help all of us and uh, see it is not that these questions will be asked to you as it is but these questions definitely give you an idea about how to prepare for these interviews and what type of questions you can expect to be faced with because if you go absolutely unprepared you might be left for a surprise which none of us wants in the interview okay if required you can pause the video here take a good look at these questions and try to answer them in the comments box below and if you have got more questions that were asked to you in the interviews definitely feel free to share them in the comments box below it will be helpful for all of us if you found today's video useful do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends also and if you want to be updated with more such videos that we keep releasing subscribe the channel today because very soon i'm going to get you a video on conceptual interview questions also that will be very helpful for the financial analyst so if you want to be updated when that video is released make sure that you subscribe to the channel now okay i'll see you very soon with a new one till then bye bye and take care